A gigantic week of earnings is upon us as the S&P finishes the day up over 1% to start off the week. Going into this week, we have some big time earnings reports to talk about. On Tuesday, that's when the fun really begins. UPS, GM, Coca-Cola, and in the afternoon, Microsoft, Alphabet, Enphase, Visa. Then let's talk about Wednesday. You got Meta, Ford, you have Boeing in the morning. And then in Thursday, you've got some more big names, Apple, Amazon, Intel, all some pretty important stocks to keep an eye on. Not to mention, you even got Shopify, McDonald's, two interesting stocks that have kind of done the exact opposite. McDonald's have held up pretty well over the past couple of months, whereas Shopify, not the case this year at all. In this video, we're gonna be covering exactly what you need to know, as well as some of the charts for these big time tech players that have earnings this week. A lot to talk about and a lot of really exciting stuff going on in the stock market. This is the Stock Trends channel. If you guys like these videos, no BS, just the charts, just the facts. Please make sure you are subscribed to the channel and hit that thumbs up button. We do appreciate you guys for tuning on in. Leave any comments and questions or stocks you want us to take a look at in the future down below. If we don't get to it in the next couple of videos, we'll keep it on a list and we'll get to it at some point in the future, we promise. So. Today's action here, we pretty much gapped up, pushed up to this high, pulled back, pushed back up, rejected, held the VWAP, and then hit a new high of the day before pulling back into the close, right back in to the prior area of resistance or this supply zone, now acting as a demand zone as they had a small little bounce on that five-minute candlestick into the close of the day across the S&P 500. Broaden this picture out, and what you're going to see is that we're sitting right up against the highs of early October on that rally after hitting new lows to finish off the month of September. So here we are at a pretty interesting spot. If we have the movement to the upside and we hold higher lows from here and start to build over roughly 3,800 here across the S&P, next targets to keep in mind is the 50 period moving average up here around 3875. That's also coming down over the coming sessions. So that will keep coming down as time goes on if we don't get there sooner rather than later. But the next spot is going to be this $3,900 area right in here across the S&P. This is a spot that we had really nice support back in here on the initial bounce. And then we had a really nice rejection there that acted as resistance back here at around 3,900 on the S&P. So that's the context that we have right now. But what we're seeing is that we actually have some nice support developing right here around this 3,650 or so. That's kind of your line in the sand. If that is given back this week after some tech earnings, then watch out for downside here, down to about 38, 35, 85, and then down towards this 3,500 will be our next targets to watch on the downside here on the S&P 500. So now that that stage is set, what are we watching? Like what are some bigger indicators that we are keeping an eye on? Well, we talked about this last week, and this is the story of last week, the 10-year yield. The 10-year yield has just continued to build these higher lows. There has seriously and not been any signs of slowing down here. Well, we've had some intraday or, you know, little volatility here and there, it again, always catches a bit and it keeps bouncing back up, meaning that actual bonds keep selling off. And it's been one of the most insane years to see the market down as much as it is and bonds also down as much as they are and yields up as much as they are, right? It's unprecedented type of time. Now, as we speak, this trend continues until broken, it's up. So the level now is around 4%. If you break back under 4% here across the 10-year yield, that's going to be kind of a line in the sand. So maybe set your alerts on your charts at the 10-year crossing below 4%. If that's the case, come back, check in, see what's going on, see where the market's at. And it could be something to keep in mind for further upside across the market. However, this strength we're seeing in the market right now, that's holding up. If it continues while the 10-year continues to kind of push up, this is quite notable. And it's really now kind of moving away from that correlation that we've been seeing all year, like we talked about last week. Here's the story, DXY, the dollar. This is where all eyes should be focused on if you're looking for you know the next signal uh, in the markets. If you're looking for metals, you're looking for silver, you're looking for gold, this is what you want to be paying attention to, even Bitcoin and even the markets. 
if this breaks down, which we are sitting right at support here on DXY on the dollar, if this support level breaks to the downside and this starts to flush off, we are going to be looking at a potential solid rally in gold, silver, some of the miners, and probably the stock market as well, unless, unless the earnings are what is the curveball here. So that's something we're going to keep in mind going forward when it comes to DXY. Under 112, pretty interesting spot. Now we had a fake out right here on Friday of last week, up to 114. Your levels are as follows. If we get back over 113.50, that looks like that's going to be breaking the upside. If we start to break down below, it looks like 111.50, that's your downside. So yes, the trend is here, but the next key levels really are going to be 1350 and down towards 1150. The two levels to keep in mind on DXY that will be signaling some big time moves in the future. Okay, let's talk some stocks. Let's talk about Microsoft first, and then we'll talk about Google, and then we'll talk about Apple, Amazon. So we'll keep this one pretty quick because this is what we got going on to the earnings. Now, going into the earnings from Microsoft on Tuesday, here's your spot to keep in mind. We have really nice support building on Microsoft at around this 234. Under 234, downside coming, potentially testing the lows of the year. But if this 234 holds, my goodness, this chart doesn't look half bad. 50 SMA up here at about 252. But next key spots to watch could be this gap fill right here up to about 265. And then the 200 period moving average is up here towards 275. That'll be the next two areas to keep in mind on Microsoft. Not to mention there is going to be a pretty nice area of resistance right up in here. A couple touches back here. Looks like back in June, July, you can see those touches right there also act as a pretty nice spot right back in here. So that's going to be up around that 267 area, which would be just north of that gap fill up to about 265 that we just mentioned. So there's Microsoft. Let's look at Google Alphabet. Take a look at this. Very similar, similar situation. Um, not as drastic of a drawdown that we saw here on the 13th. But what you're kind of seeing here is an inverse head and shoulders pattern, which is a bullish pattern. Now, obviously, earnings is a curveball, but this is a bullish pattern. So until that this breaks down, which would mean that this thing needs to break down below about 100 bucks again, ideally back below 98, breaks it down and below 98, good shot, you're coming down to 95 and dare even say new lows on the year for Google. But that's going to be your spot. Next zone to target or to keep in mind on Google is going to be lined up with some of the lows that we saw from looks like May, June and July. That's right here. That's where we're approaching right now. It looks like earnings can be the catalyst that is going to either give us the confirmation of this inverse head and shoulders, which is a good reversal bullish pattern, or we're going to get that breakdown. So this is a zone right here that obviously will probably have a, hey, you know, th this earnings will have a say as to, are we going to test this zone and break through, or are we not going to test that and head back to the downside? So up to about 107, keep that in mind. Then there's targets up here to about 111, which will be this gap fill right here on Google and over 111, 112, that gets really interesting. And that gets you back up into the range that we're talking about back in the August rally up to about 123 or so on Google's chart. Two more to go. Apple is sitting right here at this 150. It's breaking a downtrend into right now an area that acted as support, also a psychological level, 150 on Apple. It's sitting right there. So Apple is at a crucial spot going into the earnings, which is on Thursday. Don't be surprised if we have some big moves based off of Microsoft and Google that come before Apple. So keep that in mind. Market moves will be important here. We have a double bottom on Apple's chart around this 142.50. So if we do pull back and back test, you want to see that 142.50 hold. If that area holds, it's a it's fine. We have a back test of this downtrend break for upside. But if that area goes and breaks down off of earnings or off of the prior stock movements, before that, our market moves. Very good shot. Apple's going to come down to the 137, 138 area. And dare we even say, test the new lows of the year. Decent indicator resistance up here towards about 154 and then up towards 157 on Apple. 50 in the 200 moving average. We'll cross that bridge if and when we get there. But so far, chart wise, prior to earnings doesn't look half bad. Downtrend break, momentum looks pretty good. Amazon, not as strong so far to start this week, but still a pretty nice move. Had a range down to about 116 or 117, 116.50 this morning, and then popped back up to finish the day nearly at 120 per share. So pretty nice movement across Amazon. Very similar look to Microsoft's chart here on Amazon, where you have a very clear defined area of demand down to about 112 
under 112 on Amazon. That's where we're looking for downside into this purple zone, which will be down towards the lows of the year. If we hold 112 and keep going to the upside, key spots to watch, some small gaps to fill up here. This is going to be a zone right here. I guess I can probably draw in a box to make it easier to see. This is an area of support that turned resistance. That's going to be your first spot to watch up to about 125, 126. Beyond that 126, you got a gap fill up here all the way up to about 134 and that 200 moving average up here up around that 133 on Amazon. So I know a lot to unpack, but let us know your thoughts on what's going on right now in the market and some of these big tech earnings. Let's hear them down below in the comment section like always. Just something to remind you guys that last earnings cycle, late July, we had some big gap ups on Amazon, big gap ups on Apple, some of these big tech names, and we had one of the strongest weeks in the stock market back during that time. So don't assume that we must go down if earnings are necessarily not perfect. We could still see rallies and how much has been priced in is ultimately the question that the market's going to provide some really good answers to over this next week. Thanks so much for watching. Again, we don't have a specific posting schedule, so hit that thumbs up button and hit that notification bell so you guys are alerted when we do post videos here on the channel. Outside of that, this platform right here is TradingView. We'll leave a link to a free trial for TradingView in the video description box and pinned comment down below, as well as other links and resources. If you want a new broker, you want to learn some more about technical analysis, or you want some trading signals that you can add to your arsenal, they'll all be linked down below. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.